Well, it appears the heat is on and 2023 elections is getting closer. Let's take this first conversation today to Abuja. Chamberlain. Well, yes, indeed, as you've seen there in that welcoming slide, Professor Ben Odo joins us next. He is the ABGA governorship candidate for Ebony State. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning, Chamberlain. How are you today? Yeah, we're doing good. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Guys. Thank you. Thank um, you. So, uh, yeah, the, the campaign is on, uh, yes. and so we believe that lots of activities are going on. So how is it coming on in Ebony State with ABGA, your party? Yes, we are, we are doing pretty fine. Uh, ABGA, under uh, what we are doing currently, we are focused on the issues, and we are the only candidate responding to the issues with specific uh, solutions and timelines and how we want to drive those solutions to ensure that we reduce our poverty level. In the last uh, seven years, poverty has grown from 56% to 79.76% under the current leadership. And that's not good enough for us. So what we are doing is uh, we are looking at the different sectors of our economy. And we, are, you know, we have clear cut out strategies to deal with issues from education, health, agri, security, and technology. You know, so we're doing fine, and our people are at home with us. They are taking our messages, and they have confidence in what we say. I also served in the current government between 2015 and resigned in 2018. Because you resigned? I did, yes. Why? I resigned because the policy direction, the investment direction of the state was in total contrast to what I believe would drive prosperity in the morning. So I left. So was there prior conversation about how that was going to pan out before you were made the SSG with you? I ran for senatorial election in my zone in 2015, okay. in Abda. Uh, that election suffered uh, uh, extraordinary... In Abda. in Abda? That was when, after 2015. you tried with the APC No, in I ran 20... Senate first before I did it, APC in 2019. So after the uh, Abga senatorial context, I was appointed secretary to government from Abga. I was never a BDP person. So I disagreed with them on policy direction because in the last seven years, almost all the investment has gone in projects that neither stores the right value or converts the right value. So what you see today is that monies have been spent, but poverty continues to grow up from 56 to 79, almost 80%, so 24% increment in seven and a half years. That's not good for us. And under this campaign, there is extraordinary oppression and, uh, and repression in the city. APC every day, they issue warning, they issue attacks. If you are not supporting the APC candidate, you'll be attacked. I was, my convoy was attacked last week. Who issues the, the warning? Local government chairman, the party agent, the candidate of the, the party of APC. So if you move in from any winter by now, from the boundary, all the way into the city, you only see APC b -board. All of the B-boards, APCA, PDP, Labour, all removed. But in, in what capacity does the APC candidate issue the threat? He's a speaker, and he, the governor wants him okay. at all costs. So they don't care what you say. They just want the guy to be governor. He is unpopular. People don't want him. I'm a little curious. What do you think is the missing link uh, between, you know, the amount of work that is going on in Airborne State um, and the poverty figures? What do you think um, ha has prevented... Uh, the, the, will I say, the, the amount of money, the resources expended there from reflecting in the daily lives of the people. Because one of the things that the governor, current governor likes to, you know, also talk about is the fact that he uses a lot of direct labor in doing this job and the jobs that have been carried out in the state. Why do you think that people's lives are not any better? This is very important. Uh, let me make it straight. You see, if, you, if we must address poverty, we need to give our people skill. We need to invest in our education. If we don't raise critical mass of people who have the skill to do things with their life, they can't create wealth, they cannot do anything. So what happens in the point is that 85, let me say conservatively, maybe about 70, 80% of the funds invested by this government is invested in concrete. And these concretes are not even where they add any value. I'll what do you me, mean? Infrastructural I'll, development? Yes, I will give you a practical example. There are about 18 overhead bridge crosses now today in the morning. About 18. Many of them are built in locations where there are zero traffic. 
In fact, the one at Abomege, if you, if in the last two, three months now that we've been consulting people, we haven't seen a single vehicle across that overhead bridge crossing. Many of them are like that. The communical center was built with over 8 billion. The shopping mall was built with over 7 billion. I was in government when the shopping mall proposal came. And I said, mall is a private sector driven initiative. All we have to do as government is to provide land to any private sector who wants to build more. Let them build their more, rent their spaces, and pay us taxes. People came from Lagos with a plan to do the mall. First bank wrote government that they have fund to support this project. All we need was to provide three hectares. But the government ignored the private sector person who had fund to build the mall and decided to build the mall. And today, you go there, the mall has been all now for the past two years. There's no transaction going on there. The per capita earning of the people is so low, mall is for middle-income middle earners. The people can't even shop there. There is nothing going on in the place. So much of this project that has drained the resources of the state are projects that has no direct link with the people. I give you an example. In other words, you're faulting the futuristic infrastructure development. Exactly, in the state. because this infrastructure can't even be maintained. Where do you find the resources to maintain them? Hmm. The entire Ministry of Health, the entire workforce of the ministry, has only six doctors. The entire state, 17 nurses and one pharmacist. How do you run a health sector with that kind of numbers? Our education is in crisis. Under the former governor Samego, our medical school at some point was ranked second after University of Ibadan. Our law faculty was ranked first in this country. Today, the law faculty has no accreditation. Most schools today boy have just one teacher, two, three. No seats, nothing in the places. Is that not a federal institution? No, primary school and secondary school are under the purview of the state government. So, who, in, in other words, what would you then say was responsible for that? It's because of vested interests. He is an engineer. He has been a contractor all his life. So this is the only thing he knows how to do. This is what benefits him. But the people elected him. People elected him, yes. But this is where we are. And that's why we don't want him to bring a successor. Let the people choose who they want. Because he is a replica of the man. But is that not what's going to happen? There will be an election. There will be an election. And that's why we are saying he should allow people to campaign. Let the masses make their choices. So is there any, do you have any, any good authority that he's the one responsible for people not campaigning? Absolutely, because all he does is issue threats. A few weeks ago, he ordered military men to flog civil servants who came to work late. He's a dictator. But we, we saw, I mean, the, I don't know if you saw the statement from the all the All the, this government, all this government does, all this government does is denial. The video clips are there, the evidence are there. When, I, when we were attacked, we, we, were, we were doing live video while the attack was going on. Yet they deny. All they do is to keep denying. You go to the city there, you feel the, repress, the repression. People have, lots of journalists have been flogged in that city. So what, is, is it just your convoy that's attacking me? What did the police say about this? Did you report the matter to the police? I did. I did report to DSS. I had a team of DSS with me. I had a team of police. They were also eyewitness reporters. So uh, just looking now, I, I know that, you know, for a while, <clears throat> excuse me, for a while, the, your party, ABGA, uh, was, what I say, popular in the southeast yes. of the country, which is where Eboin is. But largely, um, ABGA has never won Eboin State before. Yes. Um, you know, the PDP has had a pretty strong hold on the party, perhaps until the current governor defected to the APC. Um, how do you hope to make an inroad not belonging to a mainstream party such as the PDP, um, you know, or even maybe even the governor's party? Why do you think that APGA will be the party that would appeal to the people of Eboi? I will give you, I will give you historical, you know, my historical involvement in policy of Eboi and what I have stood for in the last eight years. First of all, in the last eight years now, seven years I have, I have remained the only one speaking to issues. During COVID, the government was all over the place harassing people over taxation. In Ebony today, small businesses cannot operate because of multiple harassment on taxation. I've spoken on policy on education, I've spoken on health, I've spoken on taxes, I've virtually been the one talking. 
Now, I am a teacher by profession. I, I teach in the university. The university community has been, has been now totally obliterated. The university is, is, is handicapped. They can't even produce students who are competitive because there is no funding to do research. As, another, as, a, as a great assistant, I had fun to travel overseas to do research. Today, it doesn't exist there. So the university community, teachers have large, are large demographics. The faith-based community, the market people, all those who are going to be bringing bulk votes in this election, they have faith in what I have stood for. While in government, on all policies that has brought us to where we are, I said, look, if we must raise a state where we will have shared prosperity, let us invest in our people. Our diaspora remittance is now is the lowest in the entire southern Nigeria. Because we don't have the critical mass of people who do stuff overseas to remit funds back home. You know, so, irrespective of the fact that I'm, I'm running from Abga, the people back home, they are looking at all of us, the candidates of all the parties. They're not looking at the parties now. Because they all know, they all, know all of us. We've been around now at least for the last eight years. So they're interested in how will each of us address their concern? What are we bringing to the table? It's not about party now. It's about what each person is saying, what is he offering. And I'm the only one who is speaking to the issues and offering them solutions to these issues. So I don't expect this election. I don't think this election is about uh, PDP or APC. Or APC. It's about which of the candidates will best address the need of the people. And I think I represent that, that, that new paradigm that they expect to see. So if election. I understand you clearly, you're saying that the people are going to look beyond parties. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. People are fed up now. You can't have a state that has moved from 56% poverty rate to 80% in seven years. Third poorest state in this federation. But has that happened before? Have they it looked has. beyond parties before? But normally, well, if they look beyond parties, would they look beyond the senatorial zones? In fact, in my election in 2015, I won the election. I was, I was practically raped out. I was right. appointed as SLG because of my performance in Abga. Otherwise, they won't bring someone from Abga to serve in PDP government. I was not a member of PDP. The people in my place voted for me. Mm. So they have, they have, there is a history to that. Maria Iwachi in 2015 also won election in PPA. She came to the House of Assembly. So the people are in pain. They want to hear from us. How does the life of the, the woman in the market, how are we going to improve on her life? The young boy who has been a first class in the university, who has no job, nobody is offering him opportunity to go and become a great assistant or to go overseas for training. The woman who, is in the, in the, who has a business of about 100,000 total capital outlay, who is being asked to pay tax of 20,000, how are you going to protect her? In a point today, across all communities, across all walks of life, mm -hmm. This government interferes in their affairs. You can't elect a Thai union president without government interference. You can't elect a union as, as Okada. Almost all unions, the government are interested. So what you see is that there's crisis across the entire state. This government has created more crisis than ever. Crisis there's across the entire state. Crisis, crisis. Across, yes. There's more communal war in the point today than ever. You know, I'm looking at some of the stats which you have reeled out, and I'm, I'm looking at uh, this work done by Budget. Do you know Budget? Yes. Uh, the an NGO that focuses largely on the budgets of states yes. uh, and see how they have performed. Yes. Uh, and I'm looking at their ranking now for uh, a number, well, state, their, their latest report on the state of the states. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of fiscal performance ranking, Eboin ranks among the first five states. That's not the issue. Uh, just a moment, let me finish. The first five states uh, in, the, in the Federation, uh, they rank uh, alongside Rivers, Kaduna, Lagos, Cross River. Yes. Uh, Eboin is right there at the top. Uh, look at that, how they are performing in terms of their, uh, in terms of index. Eboin, again, is among the first five states. Uh, you know, which seem to be doing well. I'm looking at I'm looking at a number of other indices. I mean, it doesn't seem to tally with this uh, picture you're painting of Eboni as not doing very put, well because on a lot of response. the indices they're looking at here, it does look like Eboni is is faring pretty okay. Let me let me let me give you the right context. Mm -hmm. Budget performance is different from government priority. If you can budget all your fund in areas that offer nothing to the people. Mm. And perform well. That doesn't translate to real sector results. 
Yeah, but so the question is, where, of, where is the state budgeting for? What are the, where are the funds going? Part of what it is that, you know, they are rated on yes. is their dependence on federal um, government's revenue, that federal government allocation. Yeah. Ebony State is one of the states that, that is not depending a lot on the, uh, federal, on the revenue coming in from FAC. You're not getting the point. Mm -hmm. the, this money that is budgeted, which has been now and judge as the, one of the best performing state under budget performance. Where is the fund going? Is the fund going into education? Is it going into health? Is it going into food production? Yeah, but for them, yes, food production. For instance, uh, in our food, region, yes, Eboy now, food commodity price is highest Eboy. They anywhere in southeast. In the last eight years, CBA has released ten billion. That, that's what you say. So where we, is the we, food? We have not been able to go to Ebony to verify this. Yes. You say it is the highest. We, know, we also know that there was a drive at some point yes. uh, to make Ebony one of the states that produced the rice. That's what I'm saying. That, let me finish. The rice that fe feeds the nation. The nation yes. Everybody knows about Ebony rice. Yes. I would imagine that the people who will farm this rice will be yes. people in Ebony. Absolutely. And of course, they will not be buying rice if they are the ones farming the rice. Yes. So if they are the ones uh, farming this rice and making it available to to, you know, other parts of the country. Is, it not, is that not one of the things That's that, the you point know, I'm making. that should for, be having instance, that, a direct impact on their lives? It's happening. How, how is that possible? Eight billion was released to the state government to support farmers to grow rice. The fund was moved to other sector, construction. And then, Are you saying that Ebony is not growing any rice as we speak? We are not growing. That's the issue. Bulk of the rice coming to Ebony comes from the north, the paddy. We buy from Benue, Makodi, Nasarawa, KB. That's where the, the, the parties come from. Are you saying that we in, are the not three, green. in the three years when you were in government, yes. there was no rice grown? I'll give you a story. The first fund that came when I, while I was in government was $2 billion. Okay? I proposed, let us invest in our ability to do land preparation. Now, let us provide the CBN agreement with the state government was that we are going to anchor the project, which means... We take the loan on behalf of the farmers. Give the farmers the loan, they grow the rice, we offtake mm -hmm. and then pay back CBN. Out of the two billion, only about eight hundred and something million was applied to machinery, fertilizer, and ag agrochemicals. The fund to manage the farm, one point something billion, was never released till I left. Additional six billion came. No farmer got any money from the bill, that, that amount of money. So we are not growing rice. Are you saying that the CBA does not have a mechanism to be able to monitor not know. whether when it gives state I funds, know. I don't know. you know, they are able to use it for the purpose for which it is meant? The, the key issue in the budget... ...able to push that forward, you know, to, to, to rise up that, the index um, or, or whatever, rise up or let me say reduce poverty within, within its communities. And poverty has many indexes. Mm -hmm. It has the index of education. It mm -hmm. has the index of health, mm -hmm. uh, which these are fundamental. So how do you think media freedoms, how is that going to help uh, those kinds of indices, which is what a lot of people will be looking at? Media brings the fact to the surface. And if you're a chief executive, if you allow the media to say, okay, this is our findings. In this sector, you are not doing well. There are rules for improvement. If you allow people to tell you this, and you are willing to accept correction and improve yourself, it ultimately shapes the final outcome. But if you're a leader that oppresses freedom of the press, you don't want them to say exactly things the way they are, because you are going this way. Nothing changes. Mm. So there is, there is a huge connect between uh, uh, press freedom and optimizing performance of, a, of, a, of governance process. Mm. If, you, if you diminish press freedom, the ultimate outcome will suffer serious setback. And the people who are supposed to express themselves say, Look, this man said he has, put in, he has, uh, he has spent all this money here. I'm not feeling anything. So you see, once you impede on, on, on press, it's going to affect the life of the people because nobody is able to express himself. Everybody is just clapping. How do you hope to rate the issue of social justice? By what indexes would you want, if you, you are able to clinch the, 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 the ticket or the seat, yes. by what indices would you want to be rated uh, as having delivered social justice? I want to be rated as that governor that has allowed people to run their affairs 
without interferences. I'll give you an example. We have, in the school, we have student union government. In the market, we have the trade unions, people who sell all, all commodities, they have the associations. You have the transporters, you have the building material. You have all these people who are doing stuff on a daily basis. If, as a government, all I do is to determine who becomes their leader, I'm putting crisis. I want to allow our people to operate their business in an environment where they enjoy peace and they're able to express that their opinion and make their choices. That's mm. who I want to be. Well, how come you didn't reference the medical facility, medical university in Abu, in which the government has given them kudos for? Now, that's medical university. Is it not good enough? It's, it's, a, I, it's a good idea. But you've been there. Definitely, been, you've seen I, it. I've seen it. But there's, there's Does a, it meet the standards? Let me, let me go, let me go a different route. No, well, let you don't go, talk about the standards? Let me go a different route, first of all. If the state has spent state fund to build the facility as massive as that, and now you, the state has donated to the federal government, the implication is that they're buying people. But it's owned by buying people. It's not owned by buying people. It has been donated to the federal government. Yeah, but who, who it's a buying? So the opportunity available to a buying people through that investment mm -hmm. will further be diminished. So would you... The it's, it's employment is going to come through the approval of the federal government. States can't employ without approval of the federal government. How do you take state funds and invest in a sector like that and now take the state facility and donate to the federal government? Do you know, it's amazing. Listen so to I don't understand. Say. I mean, well, when I don't I understand what means. people also look at the southeast. Yes. And then many, quite a number of them say, look, but it has the best road network in the southeast. Yes. They've got some of the best infrastructure development yes. in the southeast. Yes. But you here saying, well, no. That I give him credit the for people. the roads. I, absolutely, I give him credit for the roads. But far beyond the roads, there are other major investments in infrastructures that ought not to be invested on. So but you perhaps it's looking yeah. out. I mean, because yes. some people will say, oh, this is not just about the now. You've talked about how he is built an uh, in institution and he's donated it to the federal government. Yes. But it's not the federal government that's going to attend the institutions. Yeah. It will still be the people of Eboi. And perhaps that investment is what Eboi needs to open up. Because it's it, not opening up. That's the question. That it, is the issue. But it was only it's just... Not happening. It was only just donated a few months ago. If you bought an aircraft now from Abuja to Enugu or from Lagos to Enugu, if you land at the airport and you are going, if you take statistics, I've done that separately. Mm -hmm. Most times, aboard the aircraft that lands in Nugu, less than 10 persons are going to Boeing. There is no market. It, isn't that, isn't that something that should worry you? So it's worrying me. Is it not something that you know? Perhaps he thinks that this is one. I'm not making excuses for it's him. It's warning me but because the, the chances that yes. more people will attend a federal institution based in your state are far higher than you know just people in Eboi going to a state-owned institution. Time, you don't think so? Time will tell, and I will, I will explain that. Dr. Samek was a governor in that state. He established a state university. That state university was supposed to support in raising the critical manpower requirements. Okay? That investment that took us from where we were in 1999 to where we had over hundreds of people doing stops around the world. That investment uh, has been abandoned. Pardon me, we need to wrap up now, but is it true that you tried to stop the airport that was being built in your village by the state no, government? No, I will explain what happened at the airport. But you didn't talk about it at all. The airport project, okay, when the project was conceived, People's land were collected without compensation. People were moved from their homes without regard to decent Is that why you tried to stop it? No, I called the governor and said, I am not against your project of airport. But can you kindly work out appropriate compensation so that these families can right. be appropriately taken care of? That was my position. And the airport, again today, from Enugu to Abakaliki is 35 minutes. Right, so I don't know, I don't know the value is going to bring in immediate. I don't know.
Okay, well, different I don't know. for different folks. You, you know. say you don't like the infrastructure development. Uh, the apart from priority choices of his project is what has brought us from where we were to increase our poverty today. All right, Professor So the numbers ben, are there. It's not my numbers. Professor Bernardo, yes. I've got governorship candidate for a boring state. Thank you for coming on. Thank and you. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's go over Thank now you. to Lagos.